morning. Glorious morning. Yep. side of the building. I got a few more of these uh, metal sheets to hang inside. So I'm just kind of getting them ready. So I can start cutting them and get them hung up. Ah, but today let's talk about the outside. Under this uh, tarp here is all the leftover wood that we had from our sawmill job we did. And the stuff that's left over from not going up on the building. And they're a little bit thinner pieces, so I'll be using that for the door trim and the window trim. Plus we're gonna be making the chicken coop, because we got a lot of chickens. And a lot of turkeys that need to get put up. It's pretty crazy around here right now. Okay, so that's kind of secure there. Ugh. So if you're new around here, my wife and I, we built a log cabin that we've lived in for the last decade with no public utilities, solar power, wind turbines, nothing. Just a generator that we use for power on demand. And we've been in the process of building this building that you guys are seeing right now. It has solar panels on it, it has a solar system, and it's gonna be able to run a fridge and a freezer, because uh, that's pretty much one of our only hang-ups for living off-grid for the last decade, is uh, you know just having that convenience of an ice box. Um, we could cut ice out of the pond, uh, but without a large family and with me aging, um, we decided not to go that route. Because <laughs> it takes a lot of work to get ice out of the pond. Uh, so we thought we'd get ahead of it and use some modern technology because our slogan around here is the pioneer life in the 21st century. 
So the 21st century is gonna be the solar powers and stuff like that. And then of course we use a vehicle and we have cell phones and a generator. But for the most part, we live like the pioneers with no electricity. We collect our own rainwater. We grow most of our own food. We harvest it. We have a root cellar. Uh, we harvest our animals. We grow them. I mean, the whole nine, just like back in the day, right? That adventurous spirit that seems to be lost in America today. <laughs> but it's been kind of interesting working with the wife um, you know, just even up at the sawmill, we were able to cut some logs together. The first two logs that we cut, uh, we did together, so that was kind of nice. Because it's amazing what, you know, after a decade of us living together 24 7 almost, um, we've really gotten closer and we work together really good as a team. Of course, we have our spats, just like any couple, I'm sure. But uh, it has been a neat process of living the city life and being separate you know separated so long during the day and then coming back together for those few hours at night you know that process we did you know for about half of our marriage I guess you'd say because we've been here for a decade and we've been married 20 years so for half of our marriage we lived basically in town in the city and now for the second half we've lived in the country totally dependent on ourselves um, with as minimal outside influences as we can get to run our lives and our property. So it's really been kind of neat, you know, I must say that. And to be able to lean on each other and, and develop and understand each other's weaknesses and strengths, and then also to push each other, right? Because there's some things that, that she doesn't feel that confident with that I'm able to push her a little bit and help build her confidence. And the same with me, you know, there's times that I'm uncertain about some things and a little reassurance from the wife uh, really goes a long way. <laughs> so after we milled the wood, I started reflecting on, you know, our decade of being here. And now that we're able to produce our own lumber, I just thought that was fantastic. So I got this idea in my mind that we would create like a faux um, log cabin with the powerhouse here and then I would walk you guys through how to do it step by step. So the first step was milling the lumber, then I brought the lumber down here and then we started to hang the lumber, the wife and I, we got all the... Gotta pick the most handsomest side. That side should be in, shouldn't that? That's facing us. No, it's got more little squishies. Yeah, little squishies, huh? Uh, I don't know. I think I'm gonna go with it like this. Alright, right. Got it? These things are no joke. Pretty tight there, Pilgrim. Don't be shy.
all the pieces up and then the next step after that would be staining the lumber so I got some heavy-duty TWP um, it's made in my state I always like to buy local and I started applying the stain onto the green lumber so that's something we might want to talk about real quick here I did a lot of research I'm looking um, I read the directions on the stain um, it's not really super recommended to stain green wood but you can stain green wood and I did it for an extra layer of protection because I'm hanging that up green there's gonna be some shrinkage and it's gonna dry and I think that's what they're saying on the directions is that when you use the TWP or any kind of stain on green wood it's just not gonna last as long so uh, the log cabin that we live in now we did 10 years ago with the same product it really is holding up well. I don't have any problems with it, so I don't see any problems uh, with this in the future. It might just be a little sooner than 10 or 15 or 20 years that we have to stain it. And even staining it is not really a necessity. <laughs> Still early in the morning. It's not really a necessity because if you don't stain it, it'll turn a gray color, and this is oak. Red oak and white oak is the strongest oak uh, in our area and you can let it go and it'll just turn like a gray it'll get a gray patina on it and it's still just as um you know secure or uh, sealed or anything else that you would like to uh, attribute to the staining process what the stain does is it does seal it seal the pores and then it also pr provides that color you know it's like a cedar um, color cedar tone <laughs> So I got the building stained and I really like the reveal like that's when you put the stain on that raw wood just to see how that grains gonna come out really enjoy that process and it didn't really take too long to stain the building I was I had to put a couple coats on I think I put two uh, for now for sure just to kind of get it good I made sure to get the tops and the bottoms and the sides yeah so the whole thing's all stained and so what basically my goal is um, because I only could get the two logs milled while I had the skid steer. I'm renting a skid steer so I can move these logs around. I was explaining in a, one of the previous videos that the logs weigh about seven to 8,000 pounds and it's kind of hard for one guy to muscle them around with the cant hook and stuff. So I'm working on uh, getting some machinery or some kind of ways, blocking tackles and winches or whatever uh, to get that a little easier process up front. I'll probably end up getting a skid steer because on your homestead, there's probably two things that you want for sure. And I'm going to do a video about it, but a skid steer is one of them, okay? And just makes your job a lot easier if you're uh, pulling wood out of the forest, if you're going to be digging and ditching, and, um, you know, just it's just a good utilitarian item to have on your homestead if you can afford it. And don't just let it sit there. You guys can actually make money with your skid steer. So if you just put the word out, you know, you could rent your services out locally. A lot of people need somebody to pop in with a skid steer, do some work and then go home and then that way you guys can help pay for your skid steer you know it's just another asset to have okay don't think of it as an expenditure with no return 
it is a benefit to the homestead if you could get one okay definitely a tractor with a bucket and a brush hog you know that might be your first step and then if you were getting onto something a little heavier a little more intense you could get onto the skid steer so that's one of our goals coming up is getting one of a skid steer because we really plan on utilizing the wood lot up front uh, with firewood and with slabs and logs and lumber and posts and there's a lot of stuff going on around here and having that lumber is going to be a big benefit I'm really excited about how this turned out and you can almost see uh, the next step is going to be chinking but what I was getting to before I started talking about the sawmill was that the goal here now is to get this stained and sealed and then sealed up with the chinking so that way no water can get behind these boards okay because once I put in the chinking and we have it sealed on the front with this uh, stain then it's basically watertight so no water will be able to get behind the boards and then everything should be able to dry out just fine I did a lot of research on using green lumber and the information out there is kind of spotty okay uh, so I just went for it <laughs> all right so when I put the green lumber up, uh, a lot of guys say, uh, make sure you secure it or it's gonna curl and ripple and stuff like that. So I put uh, screws and I didn't use nails. I don't want them to come out. So I put screws in the top and the bottom, okay? And of course I did it on every 16. We did our uh, Joy 16 on centers, our framing inside for the wall. So every 16 inches, we have screws holding it down top, bottom, and every once in a while I pluck one in the middle, okay? Just to kind of keep it flat. I haven't had any problems with it so far. Um, a couple of spots that I didn't have secure right off the bat started to curl a little bit, but so far it looks like it's working pretty good and the wood has already been up here for about a week and it's been pretty hot outside. So I know it's gonna be more shrinkage and all that stuff, I'm, I don't have any problems with that. And when I show you guys the next step, which will be the chinking, so stay tuned, make sure you hit that subscribe button. You guys are gonna wanna see this whole process because seriously, even if you don't mill your own lumber, you can actually get the lumber from the store, design it like I've designed it, and then you can have a, basically a log cabin look, a lot less expensive than a log cabin, a lot less lumber than a log cabin, and it'll look really cool and everyone will enjoy it. So you guys can actually do this, you just build your shell, and then for the siding, you're just gonna use lumber, and you could use pine lumber if you got some treated pine, you could use that. Uh, you could use some rough cut stuff. Uh, just give it a little more authentic look. Rough cut pine, rough, rough cut pine is cheaper than uh, pine that you get at the lumber yard because they don't have to uh, plane it and sand it and finish it and make it smooth. It's just rough cut. So you guys can save some money, put pine on there, and it'll wear just as good. You know, it's just not going to go to your grand great grandkids. You know, they might have to do some repairs on it. <laughs> Uh, but it'll be a great look for you guys. I'm really enjoying the way this is uh, turning out. So you can almost see how the chinking will look in between the runs and then on the corners I'll show you guys what I'm going to do on the corners, okay? So I'm pretty excited about how it's turning out right now. Well, I'm going to get busy on today's work and you guys are going to have a nice day. Hopefully you enjoyed the progress video on what's going on around here. And hopefully you guys subscribe to the channel. Make sure you hit the notification button. And I think the next video, well, we got some rain rolling in. That's the other problem I have right now. I'm kind of waiting for this stain to dry, which it's not too bad right now. It's been up for, uh, I think, two days. It's dry to the touch pretty much. But we have rain moving in, and I don't want to put the chinking on with the rain moving in. So the next video will probably be a day or two away, but the next video up is going to be putting on the chinking, and then we're gonna start doing the trim, stain that up, and then I'll show you how all this comes together. So it'll give you a good idea on how you can make a log cabin looking building on your property if, if that's what you're into, you know, if you like that natural look. I really enjoy it, you know, and I was kind of tossed up on how we were gonna do the outside of this building. Um, I had a couple of ideas and you know I was going to maybe do some tin like I did on the interiors for some wainscoting type stuff and I don't know I just started kicking stuff around and then with the sawmill and I thought why don't I just mill my own siding so it was a good call and I'm really excited about how it's turning out so you guys if you got any questions about this or if you want to uh, leave any comments make sure you do that down below if you got a question though I'll try to answer them best I can otherwise you guys have a great day out there and we'll see you on the next video mm -hmm.